before we begin, there will be no flash photography in the press conference. After the talent enter the, enters the room, photos may be taken from your seats, but once the press conference begins, only the six accredited photo agencies will be able, allowed to take photographs. TIFF will make photos available from this press conference on the media site within 24 hours. Our volunteers with microphones will be moving around the room to handle questions. When you ask your questions, please remember to identify yourself and your media outlet. And everyone, please make sure your cell phones are turned off. This press conference will be st streamed live at TIFF.net. Our moderator for this session is Eric Kohanic, and it is now my great pleasure to welcome the director and the cast of the film, Spring Breakers. Thanks very much. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to day two of the TIFF press conferences. On deck today, we have Spring Breakers, which is a TIFF special presentation. With us today, on my left, we have Harmony Corrine, who's the writer and director of the movie. Next to Harmony, Selena Gomez, who stars in the movie in the role of Faith. Next to Selena, we have Ashley Benson, who plays Brit in the movie. Next to Ashley, James Franco, who takes on the role of Alien. Next to James, Rachel Corrine, who takes on the role of Cotty. And last but certainly not least, Vanessa Hudgens, who plays the role of Candy. Uh, before we get uh, over to questions, we have a couple of uh, volunteers with microphones, so stick up your hands whenever you're ready for a question, uh, to ask a question. I'll throw it over to you first, uh, Harmony. Uh, this is not your first time at this festival. Talk a bit about what this festival uh, means to you and what, what it's done to your career. Uh, it's awesome. It's, I think it's, uh, it's, it's like one of the most exciting festivals by, by far. Um, definitely in North America, I think it's like it's the spot. Um, I've been coming here for a long time with all my movies. Um, and uh, yeah, it's great. Okay. All right, we'll throw it open to questions right over here. Hi, Rudy Blair, 680 News. This is for Selena Gomez. Selena, I want to talk. I want you to talk about this transition that you've been doing from from being a former Disney star to a more adult role in this film. Um, well, whenever my series ended, I was I was really excited to start doing a couple of movies, and I thought that doing um, the independent route would probably be best for me and. Whenever Harmony mentioned my name and, and I read the script, I think if there's anybody that I'm going to take this risk on and doing the transition, it would be Harmony because whenever I met with him, we met for like two hours talking about the script and, and I think he really believed in me and so I, I guess in a way he took a chance on me to put me in this movie and it's been a really great experience and it's a hard transition, I think, but I'm having fun doing it so hopefully people will accept it. <laughs> Picking up from that, Hermie, talk a bit about the casting and how you assembled the cast and what turned you on to Selena in the first place. Well, um, the, the cast, uh, when I had the idea for the film um, and these girls and what would happen and this, and this, how they would look and I was starting to imagine it and then I started to think like, you know, the types of music and the things they would watch and then I was like, well, it was kind of a dream. I, when I make movies, I always start off with like, uh, you know, concept and, and you start off with the dream the ultimate what, who you could have in your films the fantasy and so like Selena and the, these girls were really that to me because they were of this world they were of this culture and at the same time like uh, they're like uh, they're like pretty amazing and talented so yeah and and how in the casting who came first and how did you um, assemble it? No, I, it was it was more. I mean, I think the first person I, I met was Selena. She came down to Nashville and uh, like and like auditioned in my living room, which is really amazing because I didn't know anything, ab you know, like about her personally. So we have all this kind of crazy artwork in the house that I was like flipping it over, <laughs> like because I didn't want to spook her. And uh, <laughs> he thought I was like a super super Christian. And yeah, I didn't know. He she put away all of his art. I was like, if I'm a Christian girl, I probably wouldn't have done this. Like. You know, movie. <laughs> yeah, I got nervous. I didn't want to spook her, like you know. So I was like, "Hey, let's start flipping over our photographs <laughs> and uh, stuff." But um, yeah. All right. All right, over here. Question. Hi, Sean Plummer, MSN Canada. A question for uh, Harmony. Harmony, this is arguably your biggest film. You certainly have a very high-profile cast. Do you approach 
making the film any differently than you would any of your other films? No, I just like I there's like I see things in a in a specific way. Like all the films are different. Um, the store, you know, and and uh, there's a there are specific characters and scenes, locations, ideas. There's colors I want to see. There's like movement and things, and I kind of just always approach it. The films are different, but but the the approach is the same. Um, and how much of this film was improvised as you were shooting? There's not actually a lot of dialogue in the movie. I didn't want to make a movie. Sometimes I I, I didn't want to make a movie with too much talking. I started to feel like sometimes words get in the way. I wanted to make a movie that was more that that worked also in an experiential way. That was like something that was a physical experience and the, a movie that would almost like go through you um, in a in a physical way and um, I, uh, so I think it was, uh, there was scenes that were dialogue, like we did, I mean scenes that were improvised, we definitely made stuff up as we went, things that were based on ideas, um, a lot of times, for me, a, a lot of the best moments come from setting up a situation, an environment, a, a place, and, um, and like, maybe inspiring, provoking, pushing, cajoling them, and, uh, and seeing where they take it, so, I don't improvising. I never really was too fond of the word because there's all, because even though there's something, it's something else. It's more like a, it's like the real world. We're just pushing it into something else, and they're finding it. Right. We have a question down here. We're trying to get a microphone over to you. Excuse me. Uh, hello, Juan Carlos Garcia from Mexico. This is for James Franco. Uh, hi. Um, do you have some inspiration? I, I mean. Uh, for doing this character, some rapper, hip hop uh, star, <laughs> and how did you feel with this characterization, and how did you prepare for this role? Yeah. Um, well, actually, I think I was the first one. Oh, cast yeah, yeah. It, I was like, we were talking about the girl. <laughs> I thought he was talking so about the girls. Franco was the first one for sure. Uh, Alien, actually, before the script was even written. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry but, about but that. I only bring that up because um, it took. We had like a year before we actually started shooting, um, during which Harmony and I were, you know talking about the movie, then talking about the character. And um, one thing that Harmony is a master at is um, uncovering, you know, unusual kind of inspirational material, images, videos, both on the internet and then also um, once we found the location, he was, I don't know, just uh, kind of a, a master of finding both locations and local people that were both unusual, vibrant, and would add to the movie, and they ended up, you know, becoming part of the movie. And and he, so he's great at going to a place and figuring out what can be brought into our film and add a very unusual but authentic kind of texture to it. So with this character, he just, you know, sent me endless videos, songs, um, clips, like everyone from like Yellow Wolf to Little Wayne to. Um, a lot of like old Memphis rappers. Like yeah. I, I grew up in in Tennessee, so you know Three Six Mafia and all the, these yeah. type of groups from Memphis that had a certain voice. Project Pat. Right. So know. we had all of that, and then um, and then on top of that, once we got there, he had met some of these local characters that were very you know willing to help. So I just spent a lot of time with um, one guy in particular in St. Petersburg, Florida, who turned out to be like a very sweet guy so I think a lot of um, the alternative side to the character alien like this kind of sweet side maybe comes from partly comes from this this local guy that I met through Harmony to pick up a bit on that what, you know talk a bit more James over here uh, about um, the look of alien uh, when you first appeared on screen the screening I was at there were guffaws of laughter because you looked so unlike you yeah talk about some of the finer things that you may have chosen uh, in the look well I think the looks really important I mean Harmony talks about this not only the character but the movie in a way where a lot of it is about the surface but that's only because we're moving into you know kind of a new age where people do interact with each other and and pop culture and 
uh, in everything in this very, in, in a lot of times, this very superficial manner. And, and normally you think superficial is kind of a, maybe a negative term or something, but it's actually just kind of this new phenomenon or this way that we live now. So I guess that's just to say that looks are very important in this movie and surfaces are very important in this movie. And, and it was just something that Harmony and I developed. Um, and I've learned as an actor, like, um, well, I just saw this documentary in Venice about Harry Dean Stanton and what Jack Nicholson said to Harry Dean when he did, um, he directed him in Going South was, hey, just let the, uh, let the wardrobe play the character. Don't do anything. Just let the, the wardrobe, you know, inform the character. And that doesn't mean, you, you know, you're lazy or you don't do a lot of research or anything like that. But to me, it means like letting every, the environment and everything around me do at least like 50%. And then what I bring is like authentic feelings or, you know, uh, authentic grounding to the character. And, and so... Uh, I think Harmony just wanted to transform me and, and make it so that, you know, you didn't recognize me. And I think he did a pretty good job at it. And, um, and then I just kind of relaxed into it, I guess. <coughs> we have a question over here. Uh, this is Daniel Garber, the movies for CIUT 89.5 FM and culturalmining.com. For uh, Harmony, were the scene with the three women uh, in the pink balaclavas with the machine guns, was that any reference to Pussy Riot? No, I no, I, oh, we filmed this so, so a while ago, so I, I didn't, I never even uh, heard of them till like last month or something. Yeah, it's just a awesome coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Question right beside. Um, hi, Helen Barlow from Australia. I just wanted to want to know uh, uh, Vanessa Ashley and Selena um, and Rachel being. Uh, being aliens, bitches. I mean, did you ever imagine you would <laughs> you would have a character called that, aliens and that bitches. you would have a camera following your bottom as you walked? And uh, I think we made him our bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one. Good so answer. How did you get into character, though? I mean, um, th there really wasn't that much sex or nudity in the end, which is interesting. Um, but how did you how did you manage to get into those characters? I mean, did you? Um, have to kind of pra uh, rehearse much or did you just do them straight or did you have a drink or <laughs> whatever, <laughs> uh, including the hot tub scene? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, man, I mean, I think in the very beginning, uh, we got flown out a week before we started filming and Harmony just wanted us to hang out. And we would spend the nights with each other and just like be girls, allow ourselves to be completely raw and know that nobody's watching and to just like free ourselves of any, anything that we could like concern ourselves with. And um, we just got along so beautifully. I mean, I trust these girls. I love these girls more than anything. And I think that just throwing us in the circumstances our characters were in, it just allowed us to be completely free and play and push each other in whatever direction it was needed. Um, spring Break is also so highly sexualized. Um, like James said, just taking from the environment, it's almost like that rite of passage at that age, um, especially for freshmen. So just taking from... Well, so you're, like, you're creating a world, right? So they're actors, you create this world, they inhabit this world. I tell them in the very beginning, I say there's no right or wrong. I say you just become you're part of it, you're fearless. You know, It's not you, it's you, but it's not you. And then uh, nothing you do, there's no mistakes, it's all perfect. Well, I, I, I mean, directing to me starts even before uh, we get to the set. Like it starts before, like, but, Direction, directing is like a fluid, th it's an abstract thing. It's not really done in only purely in the moment. It's something that, it's an idea that you plant before. It's like a, it's a location that you show. It's something that I whisper in someone's ear. It's like, um, it's, a, it's a kind of, uh, it's a free form thing. It's like sometimes, like it only takes me a week to write the script, but I feel like it's, really years because you're thinking about it. The execution is really the fast part. And how long were you thinking about spring break then over the years? Well, I grew up with spring break, Redneck Riviera, like, uh, you know, kids going to Florida, boning and losing their virginity and then coming back and like everything's, you forget about that. Uh, um, 
I never went and like um, I had this image, I had this idea of like girls on a beach. I, it was just a, a pic, it's like an image I had in my mind of like girls on the beach uh, with ski masks and guns like robbing tourists. That was the, f the very first thing and then I just started to build a, a story, a narrative. How would that happen? How would that exist in real life? It was this, it seemed like a kind of iconic, dangerous, exciting image and then I thought spring break is a cool location. It's also metaphorical in some ways but I didn't want to make a movie that's an expose on spring break. I wanted to make a film that was more like a feeling, more like this idea of like um, in pockets of America, what happens when you get lost a little bit, like what happens when you leave the strip, um, like Alien's house, like, like you know, these like uh, <coughs> houses on the water with guns and it's the underbelly. It's like, a f it's more of a feeling than anything. Uh, we have a question down here. Hi, this question is to Harmony. Uh, Akimura Nakamura from, from Japanese magazine Cut. Uh, this film kind of reminds me of kids. Uh, do you see this story as somehow a continuation from the kids? N not, r I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't think of it as a continuation, really. Um, you know, th there's probably maybe things, characters, themes. I, mean, I don't, I, but I don't, I, I see it as its own, uh, the the form kids was a movie that was more from the inside out. This movie purposely was is about surfaces. It's I find beauty in surfaces. I don't think surface is a bad thing. I think that I think that um, I wanted to make a movie that seemed like it was candy, like you could touch it, like it was lit with skittles, like um, <laughs> do you know uh, it was about poetry of surfaces. And like, um, and then everything, all the what I wanted was that uh, all the kind of themes and the emotions and everything to drip down under the surface, and it was the residue of that. So, uh, is the story, if that makes sense. Question in the back. Hi, Rayanne Farah from Fast Company Co Create. Um, you've left this film very morally, morally ambiguous at the end. I mean, we see these girls walking off into the sunset after some pretty horrid acts. Um, were there reasons why you left it so open? Yeah, definitely, because that's what I, I wanted to do. <laughs> um, I, um, I, you know, I know that that's sometimes like a controversial stance. I, I never, I don't feel like always it's important to complete the circle. Like I feel like there's something nice about leaving a margin of the undefined. This movie is somewhere in the world of gangs. These are gangsters and mystics. It's like somewhere in the world they're like, uh, like. It's 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 maybe like he says at the end. It, it seems like a dream. Maybe it's a dream. Maybe it's not a dream. It's the real world. Maybe it's not. I didn't want to make anything. I didn't want them to have to for you for for an, a certain type of audience to feel joy in watching them get caught at the end. Maybe that's what happens 30 seconds after the camera's over, maybe not. I just want them to exist in your mind, in your dreams, and be free. Um, I don't like telling everybody what to think. I don't like judging. Question over here. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Andrea Case, CTV News Toronto. Uh, because a lot of you have been working for such a long time, um, you've missed out on this type of thing. Uh, not that you would have had this type of spring break experience yourself, but um, looking back, do you have any regrets at not being able to have that type of life where you do go to spring break, or have you been able to just kind of have that type of life where you are able to sneak away and have that type of experience of having spring break? Yes. Um, yeah, for me, I'd never been on spring break, and um, I don't think any of us I had really, are. but the best thing was that when we were filming this this movie, um, Harmony would put us into into rooms with all these extras who were really on spring break. So it definitely <laughs> felt like we like I was looking everywhere. I was like, oh my god, what is happening? It was like insane. But um, it definitely felt like I was on spring break for a good month. Yeah. All these like like thick neck jock dudes trying to rub up on them. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. On Selena. Yeah, trying to grind on Selena. It was pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Anyone else want to weigh in on the spring break didn't experience? I uh, didn't go on spring break, but I'm like, I'm happy. If I anything was different in my past, I wouldn't be here today. So, I mean, it's nice though. I, we all have our private lives, and we get to enjoy ourselves. And it's nice having great friends, which we've made on this film. And yeah, I don't regret anything. Question over here in the middle. Adrian Miller. 
Cineplex. Um, this is a question for all the actors. I know so you mentioned being sort of free and having time with other actors, but I was wondering, is it easy to be fearless in a Harmony Korean movie? Because you know that you're going to be challenged and he's going to sort of take chances. We trust Harmony <laughs> and we trust each other. Yeah. And I think that's where you're safest. In a safe environment, there's trust and there's we have so much love for each other. And I mean, Harmony would just give us a freedom to play. And I mean, that's an actor's dream, to just take scenes and do what you want with them and to be completely free. He's amazing for giving yeah. that to us. So. Harmony got us to do things that I didn't even think I was able to do, and it's a dangerous thing. You could probably get me <laughs> to do anything, <laughs> which is bad. <laughs> but it's good that we have that trust with him. Um, it obviously paid off. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, I. Uh, oh, right! Like the scene with with James. I have I have a scene in the movie with James, and and Harmony had been planning the scene in his mind for two months before the movie, <coughs> and he told me five minutes before I did the scene, and uh, work. I've only worked with James for maybe three days, so I really didn't get to know him as well as we all know him now, I guess, and. And he just, you know, I asked him, I said, well, what do I say? What do I do? And he goes, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, but do I, am I crying? Am I mad? Am I sad? He goes, sure. <sighs> and he just, like, threw me in these situations. And it, it was good. It was amazing. It was a challenge. And it was a lot of fun. And I didn't think I'd ever be able to smoke a bong, too. So. <laughs> 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 Question down here. <laughs> Stephen Elliott, The Rumpus. Uh, Harmon, well, first off, Congratulations. I feel like this is such a complete and successful work of art. Oh, thank you so much. And mm -hmm. um, I was curious just about your editing process and how much of the movie mm -hmm. it felt like, it just felt so creative and so poetic. I, I thought that couldn't possibly be in the script. You must have discovered yeah. that. In the, and I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, like the look and the feel of the movie is something I'd been, I, it was like a, a style I'd been trying to develop for a long time. It had been something I'd been doing in some stylistically and some advertising and short films and things, I, I, I was trying to figure out if I could make it work in a feature. In some ways, the music I listen to is like mostly li like electronic music or uh, rap, you know, certain types of rap music, things that were more trance oriented. Tra and I c kept feeling like there was room in movies and films to have that. And I, c I, couldn't, I couldn't understand why people hadn't experimented with the form more. And, and so, I was trying to do the develop these things. That I was more I was calling them more like micro scenes, and and uh, you'll see in the you've probably seen it saw in the film some of the scenes repeat. It's almost like looping. I wanted to, in some ways, try to induce a, a, a not a hypnosis, but a a, a kind of a repetition, a lulling, a kind of um, a, a, a a kind of tr a trance feeling. Um, I wanted to make a movie that was difficult to articulate in words. It was something that was more felt. And so these micro scenes and these, this kind of like looping idea and a, a liquid narrative was something I'd been just worked on in the edit for a long time. Um, basically, we used to say the movie happens over a two week period of time. And so in the editing, it was more about, wasn't about continuity or um, it was more about energy. It's what I care about, energy and feel. And like, um, I want you to be able to, it, I want the movies, I want it to seem like you're there, like you're feeling it, like you've experienced it, like it's gotten under you, in, inside of you. And so that was the idea with the, with the loopings, with the looping scenes. And, and basically it was about energy. The editing was about finding moments. And, and once the narrative was free like that, it was only about, it was like, it was like rhythms, uh, music, <coughs> and, um, and energy. Just to pick up on that, that would sort of play into the soundtrack too. So yeah. did, did the soundtrack come first and then and then you edited to fill the music that was going through your head? Or no, I was doing it simultaneously. Uh -huh. Like, so we would edit to like temp tracks by Skrillex and, Cl and Cliff Martinez, the two composers on the film. And then I would call them back in and when we were starting to get this, we were, I was starting to develop this, this style and it was starting to, I was saying, okay, it could work. Because in the beginning, we were filming, I, I was nervous. I wasn't sure I could make it work. And then I was like, oh, okay, this is gonna work. I brought in the composers and we would sit in there and start to play around. And the music is really uh, an, uh, an equal component to that, to the picture. It is like the sound and the music, the design I is like equal to the, they work in the, s in the same way, sometimes against each other, but for the same purpose. Right. We have a question back there. Hi, it's Sarah from the Golden Dog. 
Uh, two questions, not long. One, I just want to get the rumor straight. Is or is not James Franco's character based on Riff Raff? And two, uh, there's a great tradition of kind of wicked teen witch movies like uh, Sugar and Spice, They Robbed the Bank with the Masks. There's like Heathers and Jawbreaker. And I was wondering if you had watched any of those movies and whether you considered that genre when you were making Spring Breakers. Me? Yes, you, sorry. <laughs> I mean, Riff Raff, well, we'll talk to John. I mean, I, I love Riff Raff. He's a friend of mine. He's, the character's not, this character's not based on Riff Raff. He's based on a lot of different people. But there are things, anyway, you, you can talk about that. Well, no, I mean, uh, there was weird talk about, like, how he was, like, originally going to be cast in it, but we were talking about the movie before there was even a script, so I don't know. Like, oh, no, he was originally asked to be part the... Uh, like the, I wanted him on stage next to James rapping in the posse, first in the first the scene. So we have part of his crew, but no, yeah. it was always James. Yeah, um, but yeah, you know, he's uh, he's a really f funny, entertaining guy. And then um, um, I guess he's been doing Harmony showed me he's been doing some like revolutionary stuff in the hip hop world. So like, he's you know maybe one of a you know large number of of sources for the for the character. And the part about the teen witch movies? No, I didn't watch any of those films. No. I mean, I've watched them before in my life, but no, no, I, I didn't watch movies at all. I watched like Miami Vice, Michael Mann movie a couple of times because I love <laughs> that, but uh, <laughs> but but, mo <laughs> but mostly, I just like don't. I stop watching films when I make them. Down here, question. Hey guys, uh, Craig from Entertainment Tonight Canada. I was with you with like five months ago on set, so congratulations for being <laughs> here. Uh, amazing movie, guys. Uh, picking off the music theme, Britney Spears every time. I think we're all Britney Spears fans here. <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. there you go. So, um, <laughs> can you just talk about maybe, did you give him pointers on how to sing, or like how did that all come together? And what's your favorite Selena Gomez song, James Franco? Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, Love Song, of course, is my favorite. Uh, <laughs> love You Like a Love Song, is that what it's called? Love You Like a Love Song. Yeah, I, s I first heard that on uh, New Year's Eve, uh, Selena sang at MTV. And I was there, and I was uh, just taken like everybody else. <laughs> and um, as far as the singing, uh, he didn't need pointers. Yeah, great. that was uh, just uh, something I practiced in my trailer, and uh, <laughs> we just went with it. And um, turned out, I'm happy with it. Yeah. Ashley doesn't like it, but I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Question down here. Talking about the music again, um, some directors complain because they can't get the rights of some songs. Was it expensive or hard, hard to get the rights to uh, oh, it was actually Britney and Ellie uh, Goulding? And oh, it was cool because people, it was, uh, we're lucky and people wanted to be part of the, <coughs> it, I, I'm, always surpri I'm always happy and I'm always surprised. I, I never know, I don't really pay too much attention to, to my, the perception of myself. I just do myself, I do what I do. And so it's always nice when people Musicians, uh, people want to, you know, put their songs and you know allow you and want you want to be part of it. No, it's we were pretty lucky. Question over here, Jane. Oh, hi, Selena Jane Stevenson with the Toronto Sun. Off the top, you were asked about this transition part of your career, and you said it was hard. Can you get a little more detailed about kind of the challenges you're facing right now? Well, um, I mean, the biggest challenge for me is that I do have a younger generation of fans that that support me and that mean a lot to me. Uh, everything that I do is for my fans, wh wh my music, my shows, my clothing line, m everything is for them. And so whenever I took on you know, this movie and all the rest of the films that I was a part of this year, I knew that they weren't going to be very suitable for that generation. So I just meant that it was, it was hard in that aspect. And plus, it's, I think it's hard for people to take me seriously that way because of, of the brand that I've been given, which I'm thankful for, but, you know, having that and people obviously put you in this little box and it's just hard to kind of all of that together just kind of make it right and smooth, so that's all. Is it part of breaking out of that genre in yourself? Sure, but it's not necessarily me breaking out of anything. It's just me doing something that I really want to do. I'm super passionate about the acting part of what I of I what I what I do, and I just want to do stuff for me sometimes. Yeah. Question down here in the front. Uh, my question is for James Franco. I just wanted to know how much of your uh, role was improvised versus scripted. I mean, like the part about having 
every colored shorts. I mean, you can't write that kind of <laughs> stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, uh, I mean, yeah, he just made There was it. a lot of stuff scripted, but then, like Harmony said, like he'd set, in an, set up an environment, and um, then we just just flow with Usually it. Usually what happens with James is, everyone's different, obviously, so what, what happens with James is, is if it's not on the script, I would look at, it would, a lot of times, I just like them being around all the time as much as possible. I like them always, even when they're not in the scenes, I just like seeing them in these places because it gives me ideas. And a lot of times, just the I a script is just dead, it's just nothing. It's just something you thought of in a little room a year before, so it's just like a model kit. But then when you're there and you have the world in front of you and there's like the poetry is there, you can kind of like get new ideas that are way better, maybe they're slightly based on the idea of the script. So with James, it's a cool way. It was an interesting thing. And sometimes I would see him. I'd see him by a piano or something like that. I'd say, sit down at the piano. Let me look at you. But da 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 I'd get this idea. And I would maybe whisper a couple of lines or something. I'd say, maybe you say blah, 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 like that. Maybe not. And then I'd walk away. And then we and then usually what, ha what happens with you is that you would then just go and uh, he'd maybe use those lines. And then he'd take it somewhere else. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like... Uh we made up whole poems and uh, <laughs> yeah. on film, like as we were shooting. Yeah, right? no, totally. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's the way it was probably for every, yeah, all of you, everybody. Yeah. But yeah, but like that scene, for example. Um, yeah, whole poems. We talked about you know certain aspects of that scene, like we kind of knew where we we needed to go, but then like once we're in that room and there's all that stuff around, it's like this is. It, this is the character. This is him in like the womb of his home, and so this is what he lives for. This he's he is about surfaces. He's about you know materiality. But then, like Harmony said, how do you get to the poetry of those surfaces? So he's got these two sides. He's a gangster, but then he's more than that. He's there's some weird kind of um, I guess he's you like say myst yeah. you know mystical aspect to his materialism or the way that that he lives. It's been pushed so far that there is some sort of weird poetry achieved by by all of that. So that scene, um, somebody just somebody compared it to like the Gatsby scene, like where he's throwing all his shirts and Daisy says, "Oh, they're all so beautiful." Like that's that that scene is always. I, we'll see how they do it in the new film. That scene's always tricky because it's it's great in the book. But then when you act, you know, actually act it out, it's kind of really strange. But when you have an extreme character like this, it like works because it's both goofy, but then also very real. So we just kind of, yeah. So that's, that's kind of how we did a lot of the scenes. Just get there, you have the environment, you have the, you know, all the actors coming together. You have, you know where you're going and then you just kind of fly with it. Question over here in the middle again. Hey, I'm uh, Dan with Bullet Magazine. Um, we've done some work with the ATL twins before, so I know that their <laughs> real life personas <laughs> are very similar to what we see on screen. Can you talk about what kind of lengths you went to find these peripheral figures and how they were receptive to your directorial efforts? <laughs> also, they just texted me and want to know why they're not invited to the press conference. <laughs> yeah, they will text the everybody they can. <laughs> they, um, they were invited. I wouldn't have. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, ATL twins are these like two, yeah, they're these two amazing identical mirror twins that are in the film. They don't speak, but they're uh, they're part of uh, they're part of Aliens crew. I grew up in Nashville. I'd heard I had friends in Atlanta uh, that years ago had told me about these these kids and how crazy they were. Well, they're not kids anymore, but um, and like um, and <coughs> so then I drove to Atlanta. I'd read this article that someone did a profile on them I, just a couple years ago, and I drove to Atlanta and. Um, they're fucking nuts. They're bonkers. You know, they like they sleep in the same bed, take showers at the same time, eat food together. They don't drink water. They don't believe in uh, like they they only live off of Mountain Dew. Um, they 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 only have and sex. And Red Bull. And Red Bull. They only, they only have sex with the same woman simultaneously. They almost married the same. They woman. They almost married the same woman. They uh, they don't like you know uh, what else. <laughs> um, they live in penthouses. Um, They've never been apart for more than like two minutes. Yeah, they've never been they apart. They eat off the same plate. Yeah. <laughs> Make love to the same woman, sing the same songs. <laughs> right then. Question One's a righty, the other's a lefty. We'll let him continue. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Rad from Now, uh, now Magazine in Toronto. I have a question for James. Um, James, aside from the music that you researched for this movie, uh, are you a hip hop head? What, what do you listen to nowadays? Uh, and how do you feel about what hip hop has turned into since the days of, say, Biggie, Nas, Wu? 
I love hip hop. I, I I won't say that I'm like a specialist in it. Um, I, a lot of my uh, <clears throat> the people I listen to come from you know Harmony and Rachel. Um, um, I have to say, you know, there's a scene um, in the beginning where the char- my character is first seen uh, where he's on the beach rapping on the stage, and in the script it was like. Oh, they're in a, a little club, and in the distance, there's a, a character alien, and he's just finishing up a song. But then we got to the location, and it was like this MTV style, like beach stage, and we had, you know, hundreds of background people that w- we had hired. But then, in addition to that, there were, you know, the beach was filled with, you know, real beach patrons, and um, so they all came over. So it was like turned into this real like concert kind of thing on the beach where I'm rapping and uh it was um it was such a rush so yeah maybe I might get into the rap game you know he's a he's a Gucci (laughs) man fan him and Gucci are gonna do a tour together yeah so yeah look out for more from Franco slash alien (laughs) question over here uh yes this question is for Selena Tammy from uh City News uh, just a question right oh, here. <laughs> um, you, you mentioned uh, your younger fan base and how you do care a lot for them. Any kind of message to those younger fans who might want to try to see this movie? <laughs> Don't see it? Uh, I, I mean, see it. <laughs> he wants them to see it. It's e- educational. No. <laughs> I, I mean, I I mean, I wrote I wrote a message on on my on my social networking site to them, you know, saying uh, m- kids my age, my generation, I think that they should see it because it is very real. We're not really sugarcoating anything, but then I put underneath, I'm like, it's rated R, so please don't see it if you're under 18. So I don't know. That's as much warning as I can give to the parents and the kids, but you can't control what kids do. So question over here. Hi, um, this question is for Harmony. My name is Patty Johnson from Artfag City. Um, I wanted to know, you've talked a lot about surfaces and the quali- um, surface being very important to um, the, the quality of the film. And I wondered if you could be a little bit more specific about what you mean by surfaces because yeah. the shots themselves, most of them, I guess, um, I might expect like a, um, the shots themselves to be like a little bit abstract, or right. uh, um, so I wondered maybe you could talk yeah, about no, that th- a little. Yeah, no, I just mean when I see Sarah, I mean I wanted so much of what I see today, so much of what's interesting is it's it's um, I wanted it to be a mix of high and low and to not differentiate. Like when I see, I wanted it to be a film that felt like you could f- like. Um, how can I say this? Um, the aesthetic, the feeling of it, it needed to like to pop. It ne- I wanted to tell a story more from the outside in. I wanted it to be, when I say services, it, it needed to feel like something beautiful, but maybe you weren't there with them. Does that make sense? Like, um, um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it any better, really. It's just like... Uh, I wasn't making a documentary, right? Like I wasn't making an expose. It's more to do with um, painting pictures maybe, and then um, than anything. Which then led to this sort of a dreamlike sort of flow yeah. to it? Is that what you're? Yeah, 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 I mean it has, a, it has a dreamy quality. I just didn't want it to be any, I, it's a, I wanted, to, it's a new thing, it's a, I wanted to make something that worked in a, in a different way. Um, that had both reality and both like dreamlike qual- qualities to it that was both very real and then also very ethereal um, and so that's what I mean by surface question over here again um, hi me again um, R- uh, Selena how did you feel about leaving the group early and missing out on a lot of the <laughs> the <laughs> fun at towards the end and uh. perhaps Rachel as well and just one other thing how many do, do I recall it in our last interview that you're Christian um, a Catholic? No, no, no. A okay. Jewish guy. A Jewish guy. So, <laughs> so how do you how do you relate to the violence in the film that some people were put off by um, in, at the screaning? And but if <coughs> so then it could go first. Thanks. 
Um, I'm yeah. I was bummed I missed out on the strip club stuff, but um, it, it um, I don't know. I I felt I felt like this character was right for me. Um, I, of course, I actually would have loved to have stayed in general just to be around them, and you know, I love watching Harmony work and the girls work. But I think Mike, I liked what I did with my character, and um, I think it was right for me. So. Um, I think that there was the perfect build throughout the whole film, and um, I think that my character sort of bowed out at the right time, and we got to follow the the girls. You know, they had this sociopathic like intensity, and um, I think it was the the right development. In some ways, the girls, all their parts, they're all. I always envision them in some ways working as all one. They're all part of the same person in some ways. They're 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 different uh, identities, but they they share the same soul. You know, they're all the four girls are one. As far as the violence, um, what is it? How do I feel about the, the violence? Yeah, I mean, how do you react to people being turned off by it? Well, I mean, that's fine. Uh, I I react. I I mean, it's the it is the story. These are movies. Um, these are ho these are insane uh, uh, and horrible and mesmerizing and difficult and uh, outrageous things that they do, um, but it's a movie and like um, and it's part of the story and so violence is part of the reality of the world and so um, it's uh, but I react like you know like I always react with all my films I think there's no right or wrong way to react if if you're offended by it I think that's great. If you love it, I think that's great. I want you to love it. I want you to be moved by it. But at the same time, I don't make movies for, I've never made movies for huge mass audiences. I don't even know how to do that. Or I, I, I make films uh, like for a specific, a specific type of movie. Um, and I hope as many people as possible identify with it and, you know, but it, there's always gonna be people that are offended by it. everything I do, I think. <laughs> Question over there. Hi, uh, Michael from ctv.ca. Uh, this question is for the, the four uh, female leads. A lot of people asked about uh, your young fan bases, but I'm just curious uh, for the intended audiences, when adult women go and see this movie and they walk out of the theater, what's the one thing you want them to be talking about for each of your respective characters? Can I go first? No. Ashley, you can go. <laughs> Ashley, do I it. No, I don't like going first. That's <laughs> you go. I mean, if anything, I want, like Harmony said, to be moved by the film, also by the performances. I think all the girls did so well, and and you kind of they kind of get stuck in your head. And when I, I watched it for the first time in Venice and all together, and all of their characters just kind of stuck in in my mind, and they have this certain confidence within them, and it's a little twisted, but it's kind of admirable at the same time. And in my mind, that's how I walked out of the movie thinking, so. Yeah, I think to be empowered and fear and be fearless, you know, just to know that if you set your mind to something, you can get it done, mm -hmm. whether or not it's robbing someone <laughs> or <laughs> like starting your own business. Like, you, I just want them to feel empowered. <laughs> okay, <laughs> on that note, Spring Breakers is a TIFF special presentation. It will have its TIFF premiere tonight at 6 o'clock at the Ryerson Theater. I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.